Love him or hate him, there aren't many players like Javier Chicharito Hernandez. A player that always seems to be in the right place at the right time. But what if I told you his greatest strength wasn't his finishing? Chicharito! More Mexican magic from Chicharito! His strongest trait was truly his mindset. Yeah, nothing happens in your life that you cannot overcome it. And even though he was never the biggest, strongest, or most technical player on the team, Chicharito always dropped every ounce of his soul on the pitch. For Ronaldo Hernandez! Javier Hernandez has his goal! So let's find out how Javier Hernandez became Chicharito. Mexico's top leading goal scorer and the master of being in the right place at the right time. Javier Hernandez Balcazar, also known as Chicharito, was born on June 1, 1988 in Guadalajara, Mexico. To put it simply, Javier had football running through his veins. As his father and grandfather both played professionally for the Mexican national team and for first division sides Monarcas and Chivas. From a very young age, it was obvious that Chicharito would follow the same path. At just nine years old, Chicharito would join Chivas de Guadalajara as he became a part of their academy. In 2005, although Chicharito would be selected to be part of the Under-17 World Championship, an injury sidelined him. Sadly, Chicharito would have to just watch as he saw his country beat Brazil in the finals. But this would not deter Chicharito, as when he recovered, he would rise through the ranks, becoming a regular starter on Chivas' second division team and eventually making his first team debut in 2006 in a match against Necaxa. Chicharito would come on in the 82nd minute for Omar Bravo, and just five minutes later, Chicharito would score this banger of a goal. The amazing debut would come crashing down though, as for the next 17 matches, Chicharito wouldn't be able to put the ball in the back of the net. Thankfully, toward the end of the 2008 Apertura, Chicharito would finally start scoring again, and things seemed to just get better and better for the Mexican striker. But the real year was 2009 when Chicharito would finish as a third joint top scorer with 11 goals and 17 appearances in the 2009 Apertura. And things seemed to just get better and better for the Mexican striker. And in 2010 in the Torneo Bicentenario, Chicharito would score 8 goals in 5 games and he would finish as a joint leading goal scorer for the tournament with 10 goals in 11 games and of course Chicharito's efforts did not go unnoticed as he began to get the attention from clubs all over Europe like PSV, Wolfsburg, and Valencia. But none of them would stand a chance as Javier would go to Manchester United, who had been scouting him since 2009. Sir Alex Ferguson originally wanted to wait another year to sign him, but with his improved form and a call up to the 2010 World Cup, Manchester United decided they couldn't wait to sign the Mexican striker. A deal would be proposed on April 8, 2010 done completely in secrecy. Chicharito would join Mexico and head to South Africa for the 2010 World Cup. Mainly coming off the bench, Chicharito would shock the world when he would score the only goal against France, destroying Hugo Lloris and a prime Messi's Argentina. After the World Cup, Chicharito would play his final game for Chivas in a friendly against Manchester United, where he would play the first half of the match for Chivas, where he scored, and the second half for Manchester United. Javier would head to Manchester, where he would begin his journey of European football. His competitive debut would come on August 8th against Chelsea in the 2010 FA Community Shield, where he scored his first goal literally with his own face being potentially the only Premier League player to assist and score his own goal. All jokes aside, this game would begin a reign of terror, as throughout his Premier League tenure, he always found a way to score against the Blues. Chicharito would have a monster debut season, scoring 20 goals and having 5 assists. He would be the first player to pull this off since club legend Ruud van Nistelrooy. Chicharito had God-tier intuition as it always seemed like the ball would just appear right at his feet. His amazing positional play would allow him to consistently put the ball in the back of the net. And somehow at just 5'9", he was able to score amazing headers over some of the world's best center backs. And although he mostly came off the bench, it seemed he was always able to score when they needed him most. Alongside Wayne Rooney, Dimitar Berbatov, Ryan Giggs, Michael Carrick, and the rest of the Man United squad, would completely surprise the Premier League. Chicharito's great form carried over into the Champions League, where he scored a brace against Marseille, sending Manchester United to play league rivals Chelsea in the semi-finals. 
Of course, Chicharito scored early in the match, helping Manchester United defeat their rivals. Chicharito would score against the Blues once again in a 2-1 victory that pretty much handed United the league title. The Mexican debutante would become Manchester United's second top scorer behind only Dimitar Berbatov. The fans would vote Chicharito as the most valuable player that season, earning him the Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year award, as nobody expected the 20 goals he provided in their Premier League winning season. Sadly, in the Champions League final, Chicharito and Manchester United would fall to prime Barcelona, as they were just simply too much to handle. Right when it seemed Chicharito was unstoppable, he suffered a concussion and had to miss all of the preseason and the season opener. Regardless, United would sign Hernandez to a five-year extension until 2016. Chicharito's scoring would taper off slightly, but he still had a good season considering he scored 12 goals in 28 matches, coming mostly off the bench. Unfortunately, this would be the start of an injury crisis with Chicharito, where he had to miss several games due to an ankle injury. In 2012-13, Chicharito would return and begin looking like his former self again, scoring several clutch goals and comebacks for United, scraping up all the points he could. Javier would score 18 goals that season, including the final Manchester United goal under Sir Alex Ferguson, as that would be his final season with the club. Manchester United would win the league one more time in 2012-13, and it seemed like nothing could get in the way of Javier Hernandez scoring goals for Manchester United. Sadly, that would be until the day David Moyes would become manager and completely underutilize Chicharito, making him play almost exclusively off the bench. It seemed quite obvious that Chicharito would have to find his starting minutes at another club in Europe. The Mexican striker would leave Manchester United after 59 goals and 157 appearances. At the 2014 World Cup, Chicharito would score his only goal against Croatia, helping Mexico move into the round of 16, where they would eventually lose in a very close match to the Netherlands in the very famous No Era Penal match. On September 15, 2014, Chicharito would join Real Madrid on a one-year loan. Real Madrid would recruit him as they were trying to strengthen their bench. Since the club already had elite forwards in Cristiano Ronaldo, Gareth Bell, and Karim Benzema, Chicharito would score nine goals for Real Madrid off the bench. But the goal that was the most important of all would be his only Champions League goal for the club, where Real Madrid faced crosstown rivals Atletico Madrid, where after a scoreless first leg, Chicharito would score Real Madrid's only goal, helping them to advance to the semifinals of the Champions League. After his short stint in Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen would purchase Chicharito for Manchester United for a reported fee of 7.3 million euros, sending him to the Bundesliga. Hernandez would hit the ground running, scoring 26 goals and 43 appearances for the German side in his debut season. He was even voted Bundesliga Player of the Month three times that season, as it seemed that the Mexican striker could not stop scoring goals. Chicharito would lead Bayer Leverkusen to a third place finish in the Bundesliga, only behind Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. Chicharito was clearly going to be the star man at Leverkusen. The following season, Chicharito would start red hot, scoring a few goals and even getting a perfect hat-trick against FSV Mainz. Unfortunately, after that, Chicharito would go on a crazy scoring drought, not scoring in the next 11 matches. Later that season in the Champions League on February 21st against Atletico Madrid, Chicharito would become the Mexican player with the most Champions League appearances, surpassing compatriot Rafael Marquez. Chicharito would finish that season with 13 goals and 4 assists and 36 appearances. After two good years in the Bundesliga, on July 24, 2017, Chicharito would return to the Premier League and join West Ham United for 16 million euros on a three-year contract. His start at West Ham United would be rough, as in his debut match, he would get clobbered by his former club 4-0. Later, the manager Slavin Bilic would be sacked and be replaced with Chicharito's nemesis, David Moyes. The main reason Chicharito left Manchester United in the first place. Chicharito spent large portions of the season either injured or on the bench, and when he was in good health, he was completely underutilized by David Moyes, although he recognized the club needed a goal scorer. Regardless, Chicharito was making the most out of the opportunities he was given. When asked about facing Germany in the 2018 World Cup, Chicharito made this famous quote, which demonstrated his great positivity. At the 2018 
2019 World Cup, Chicharito would assist compatriot Chucky Lozano in what would be a 1-0 win over reigning champions Germany. In the following match, Hernandez would score a winning goal to overcome South Korea, being named the man of the match. Mexico would lose in the round of 16 to Brazil. Although Mexico got knocked out, Chicharito now scored in three consecutive World Cups, further cementing himself as a Mexican legend. On the final day of the 2019 summer transfer window, Chicharito would put in his forms to be sent out of the club. The very next day, Chicharito would sign with La Liga side Sevilla. And meanwhile, he scored a few notable goals for them especially in the Europa League. Just a few months later, Chicharito would sign with the LA Galaxy of Major League Soccer, becoming the highest paid player in the MLS. Chicharito would only score a single goal in 11 appearances his debut season. But the following season in 2021-22, Chicharito would turn back the clock and net 19 goals for the Galaxy. On June 7, 2023, Chicharito would face one of his biggest trials as he would tear his ACL in a match against Real Salt Lake. And although he is in the twilight of his career, the Mexican goal getter has provided us with so many magical moments and should definitely be remembered as a Mexican legend and a poacher who could score at goals anywhere he went. What's your favorite part of Chicharito's career? And do you think he will be able to make a comeback from his injury? Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and a subscribe. We've got more videos coming up. And if you have a favorite player you want me to do one of these videos on, let me know down below. And until then, watch one of these other videos. Later.